Pardon. So I welcome all of you for this life transforming uh, session today on how to increase not only your lifespan but as well as your health span. Okay. So I would like to just conduct a poll to just get the awareness about the longevity. Now, all of you esteemed colleague has to participate in this poll. Now the first poll is which is the biggest cause of human suffering? Okay. So whether it is heart disease, it's a cancer, it's aging or dementia. Okay. So I'm launching the poll. Which is the biggest cause of human suffering? Kindly participate in the poll. So, still two people are remaining. Kindly participate in the poll. Let it be interactive. Okay, I'll end the poll. Okay, and you can see 75% says aging is the most uh, biggest cause of human suffering. Okay, so all are right. Now I will launch a second poll. Okay, so genes are our final destiny whether it is true or false is genes is the only thing or there is something else on top of the genes which de determine our destiny kindly participate in the poll it's okay i'm ending the poll i'm sharing the result so 15% say it's a true and 85% say it's a false. Absolutely right. So I'm gonna share what is other things other than the, our genetic makeup which determine our fate. Next poll, I'm launching it. next poll. Now, how much lifespan do you want? You want to live for 80 years or 100 years or 120 years? Right in the, just participate in the poll. All 16 participants, just participate in the poll. Today, whatever you're gonna tell, God is going, going to give that much of lifespan. <laughs> okay, I'm just ending the poll. I'm sharing the result. Now almost 50% want 80 years, 21% want 100 years, and 30% want 120 years. Great. So only, I mean, 80% of 50% uh, of the people want only 80 years. I'm quite surprised. I think we are all aware of the fact what the problem aging brings with us. That's why so many people don't want to live life beyond 80, 80 years because they have seen the sufferings which is undergone by the old people. But I'm gonna share the things which not only going to increase your lifespan, but also health span. Okay, you would be able to be active in your 80s and 90 years. And there's been a cutting edge research going all across the world. And I'm, I'm gonna share that. And there, there are certain practical tips which you should follow in your day-to-day -day life, which will increase your health span as well as lifespan. So next poll. So what is the longest human lifespan till death? Is it 110 years, 120 years or 130 years? Which is the Greenies, in a Greenies book of world record, the longest person ever lived on this earth. So that, that is a human capacity to live the life. Okay, I'm ending the poll. 
So 46% said one 10 years, 46% says one 20 years and 8% one 30 years. So the longest person who has lived the life is around 122 years and 165 days. And her name was Jenny Claremont. She was from France. She was uh, the longest human being lived on this earth. So high protein diet is required for health. Is it true or false? High protein diet is required for health. So there's a lot of advertisement that you take this protein powder, it will increase your health. And human requires high protein diet and protein diet is required for health. Is it true or false? Okay, I'm ending the poll. I'm sharing the result. So 33% said it's a true and 67% said it's a false. So majority agree that protein, high protein diet. Okay, high protein diet is not required for health. And last poll now, I'm gonna share a last poll. So now this poll is to just let me understand how much awareness do you have about the health. How many of you want to live healthy life till 100 year of age? How many of you want to live healthy life? Means you want to remain active, and devoid of all the problem associated with the aging and live a life till 100 years. Okay, 100% want to live a life, healthy life, not only prolonging the life in years, but want to have a life in that particular years. That is a topic, how to add years in your life as well as add life in your years. Okay. It is uh, actually no meaning just to add years in your life. There has to be life in your years. So thank you so much for uh, participating in this poll. Now, today we are going to discuss about this thing, how to add years in your life and life to your years and how to increase your not only lifespan, but your health span. And I'd like to thank all of you from bottom of my heart for being here. You might be doing so many things, but you chose to be here. And I want to thank so much for being here. Now, what we are going to learn today. Okay. So we are going to learn that aging is the biggest cause of human suffering. Okay. Now we are going to discuss what are the causes of aging, why we age and I'm going to discuss the information theory of aging, which is put forward by the scientist named Dr. David Sinclair, who is from Harvard University, USA. And there has been a lot of study being done on uh, the many causes of aging and there are certain causes which cause, which leads to aging. Now I'm going to discuss something about genome and epigenome. And next would be on longevity gene. There are certain gene in our cell, which are responsible for maintaining our youth, for maintaining our health. Okay. And when these genes are messed up, then it leads to disease and aging. Now, how to increase lifespan as well as health span. And next thing, I'm going to discuss the scientific research being done on increasing the lifespan as well as health span. So what are the various research done across the world? to increase the health span as well as lifespan. And the last, I'm gonna discuss, is it possible to live 150 years of healthy life? Can we reverse the age and become immortal? Okay, so I'm gonna discuss this and there are a lot of studies done on animal and in the animal study, they were able to reverse the age. Okay, so I'm gonna discuss that. And those who want to take their health to the next level, I'm gonna discuss my uh, community. Now I'd like to give certain instruction, have a note pad and pen with you because you might be getting certain golden nuggets which you would like to implement in your life. Because if you just attend this webinar and then you will forget about everything later on, just put down the point you would like to implement in your life. If you have any job to be done, then you can continue with that job because if you attend this webinar from 
start to end, then it will completely transform your life. Because I'm going to share a life transforming principle and thousands of people has benefited from it. So with your kind permission, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a Dr. Sunil Sable. I'm basically a pediatric neurologist. I'm also a wellness coach, a stress management and management consultant and international number one bestseller author. I did my MBBS from BJ Medical College and Sassoon General Hospital, Pune. I did my uh, MD from Set GS Medical College and KM Hospital, Mumbai. And currently I'm practicing as a pediatric neurologist. And I'm also a wellness coach and stress management consultant, helping many people manage their stress, reverse their chronic disorder and lead healthy and happy life. Okay. So my book, Oh, stress, give me a big uh, stress. Oh, stress, give me a break has become uh, international number one bestseller on Amazon. You can see the Amazon has given a golden symbol on it. And recently I have published a book, 17 powerful secret to manage stress during Corona pandemic. So just to begin, uh, I think somebody has raised the hand. I, I'd like to just Somebody has raised the hand. Uh, anybody has any doubt till this time? And am I audible and visible? So that we can start the main topic now. Somebody has raised hand. Is there any doubt? You can write in the chat box. Somebody has raised the hand. So write in the chat box whether I am audible and visible so that I can go ahead. Okay, I, I was frozen. Now seems better. I'll just adjust my uh, this thing, uh, uh, the connection. Now write in the chat box whether now I am visible and I am audible so that I can go ahead. Linda, I am, I, I am visible now. I am, I am audible now. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we all know that aging is the number one cause of human suffering. The biggest killer like heart disease, cancer, dementia, affect older people more than the younger people. And in Corona pandemic, we have seen that the maximum mortality was to the older people. They were a hundred times more affected by the Corona pandemic and the mortality rate were highest in the older people. Out of 1.5 lakh people die on this earth every day, one lakh is caused by the aging. Okay. And before these diseases affect human being, there is a lot of suffering prior to this. So the last part of our life is always consist of frailty, forgetfulness, incontinence, immobility, dependence on other, and there's pain. There's so much of suffering the human has to undergo before they take their last breath. Okay. So we are dealing with this problem in a piecemeal way. We are treating heart disease, we are treating cancer, we are treating dementia. But if we come to know what is the underlying cause of it, and that is aging. And if we tackle this aging so that we can prevent this disorder or we can defer this disorder and we can have a healthy lifespan. Okay, so just to refresh all of you regarding our biology class. Okay, because this will help you to understand what we are going to discuss today. Now we all know there is a cell in our body. Our body is made up of trillions of cells. Now the cell contain nucleus and in nucleus there is 
what we call as a chromosome. There are 46 chromosome, 23 pairs of chromosome, 22 pairs of autosome and 21 pair of uh, sex chromosome. So there are 23 pairs of chromosome. Now chromosome contain what is called as DNA. Okay, so this is the our the genetic information is stored in our DNA and certain segment of DNA we call it as a gene. Okay, so I hope I, I'm able to simplify this biology because genetic is always difficult for all of us. So the nucleus contain chromosome, chromosome contain DNA. Okay, and the, the segment of DNA is called a gene and this gene is code certain proteins. Okay, so there are almost 22,000 genes in our body. Now the, this DNA has this double helical structure. Okay, and this, this helix has four base. This is adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And this adenine is, connect, uh, adenine is connected to thymine and cytosine is connected to guanine on opposite side. And this is like rugs of this ladder. And this segment of the DNA is called a gene. And then this gene code for certain protein. And if there is some mutation in this gene, then it leads to certain diseases. Okay. So again, a simplified way, this is cell. Then there is a chromosome. This is a DNA. And the segment of this DNA is called a gene. And this gene is converted to RNA by transcription and RNA to protein by translation. So this way, this protein is synthesized. Okay, now till this time, it was postulated that our life depends on our gene. Okay, but later on it is found that there are certain disorder which is not coded by a gene. Okay, so scientists found that something there is something else in our cell which determine our destiny and the scientists give name to this molecule proteins a compound called epigenome epigenome means those which is above the genome okay or in addition to the genome now what is this epigenome now this epigenome are the chemical compounds and protein which they get attached to the DNA or genes or the base pair on the DNA and they turn on and the turn off the gene. Okay, so gene, so in the research, they found that uh, they, uh, they did a research on the mice. Okay, so they found that the mice whom the mother groomed in a proper way, for example, the mother licked the mice, played with the mice, found that these mice had a long lifespan and they had a pretty healthy life. On the other hand, those mice who were not licked by the mother, not cuddled by the mother mice, they had less lifespan and they had a lot of diseases. Now, these both mice had the same genetic material, but the way they has been groomed, the, the way they has been handled by the mother determine their health. So scientists said, okay, it may be a problem in mother. So what they did, they took a identical mice, identical twins of mice, and they gave a foster mother to them. One foster mother to group A and one foster mother to group B. And in group A, the mother fondled, licked the mice, and in group B, she just neglected that mice. And what they found that the mice who were licked, cuddled, had a greater lifespan and health span as compared to group B, where the mother neglected them. So why this happened? Because they were identical, their genes were identical. Their mother were separate. They, the mother, uh, they, uh, they didn't have the biological mother. Still, those mice who has given a good environment, they lived long life. They lived a healthy life. So our gene doesn't determine our destiny. Our environment, our lifestyle, our diet, 
determine which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off and this is because of this epigenome so genetic genes is not the end it is not the destiny it is the epigenome and you can always modify this epigenome by changing the way you live by changing your lifestyle and by changing your thought process and i'm going to discuss these things so you can see this is a dna molecule which is wrapped around what is called as histone okay and there is this chemical tag which get attached to this base pair on dna like methyl methyl tag acetyl tag or phosphoryl tag and then it turn or turn on the genes and turn off the genes okay so that two genome and epigenome epigenome will determine which genes is turned on and which genes is turned off and again the identity of cell is because of epigenome because every cell has same genes okay but some cell will behave as a neuron some cell will behave as a skin cell some cell will behave as a rbc so it is determined by this epigenome the identity of cell is because of this epigenome that's why from a two cell there are trillions of cell is formed and they divide into different cell like neurons nephrons fibroblast rbcs and all it depends upon this epigenome now i hope i was able to uh, clarify about uh, the dna in a simplified way write in the chat box whether yes if i was able to simplify this biological thing if there is any doubt you can put it on the chat box right whether i was able to clarify the genetic aspect because it is very complicated all the doctors know it is very complicated this genetic stuff so all are clarified about the basic aspect of our genes thank you linda yes it's clear thank you batul ji thank you dr nitish thank you dr samir so now we are going to discuss the causes of aging and disease why we age now the first and foremost cause is genetic genomic instability caused by dna damage just excuse me there is some phone give me a second <laughs> sorry there was a phone i put it on a silent mode so causes of aging and diseases so first is genetic instability caused by dna damage okay so we are going to discuss this causes in detail attrition of telomeres alteration of epigenome that controls which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off that is called as information theory of aging loss of healthy protein maintenance called as proteostasis mitochondrial dysfunction accumulation of zombie like senescent cell an exhaustion of stem cell okay so we are going to discuss these things in brief so why our dna get damaged so our dna get damaged because of excess persistent chronic stress okay we all know that because of this fast life we all are under tremendous stress and to add fuel to fire because of this corona pandemic we are under tremendous stress and if this stress is there for a prolonged period of time then it causes dna damage for a short period of time it is helpful for a prolonged period of time it causes dna damage smoking smoking also cause dna damage we all know air pollution pcb in plastic and organohalides which are present in various solvent pesticide and hydraulic fluid causes dna damage exposure to the x rays a ct scan excess sunlight and uv rays also cause dna damage so this is also dna damage is cause of aging second is attrition of telomeres now telomeres are the end of chromosome 
okay the length of telomere is directly proportional to our lifespan okay these telomeres are extremely essential for maintaining genetic stability if there is shortening of these telomeres or there is some problem then it lead to gene genomic instability and lead lead to various kind of diseases so as cell divide as we age the length of telomeres decreases and it lead to various diseases okay so when the length of the telomere decreases it lead to senescence apoptosis and oncogenic transmission of the cells and this length depends upon the person's age its genetic factor epigenetic factor its environment its social economic status its lifestyle whether the person exercise or not its body weight and smoking certain lifestyle like smoking pollution persistent stress obesity lack of exercise consumption of healthy diet unhealthy diet increases the pace of telomere telomere shortening leading to illness and premature death okay and it is found that this stress causes persistent stress causes decrease in the telomere length also this diet and there is a, a connection between uh, diet and telomere length and those who consume high protein diet animal protein casein there is a increase attrition of this telomeres okay so protein is good for our health but excess protein is bad for our health okay also animal protein is bad for our health also the lack of antioxidant like omega 3 fatty acid vitamin e vitamin c beta carotene is also associated with telomere attrition so telomere it depends upon our lifestyle our diet our stress and exercise if there is a lack of physical exercise it lead to telomere attrition the next cause of aging is mitochondrial dysfunction so we all know that the mitochondria is a powerhouse of energy okay and the mitochondria has their own dna and as we age there is a mutation which accumulate in this mitochondria and it lead to dysfunctions and the mitochondrial dna has 10 time more chance of having mutation rather than the nuclear dna and mitochondria is impacted by environmental factors and toxins so because of environmental factor and toxin this uh there is a dysfunction of this mitochondria the next cause of uh aging is accumulation of zombie like senescence cell now we what are this uh, zombie like you can see in the figure this is a normal cell and this is a senescent cell now as we age okay certain cells they have divided too many times okay they have had a enough dna damage so what happens they start uh, they stop Uh, reprodu uh, reproducing, but they don't go away. They stays there, and they don't only stays there, but they secrete a inflammatory molecule called cytokine, and then they inflame other surrounding cell. Okay, so these cells are useless, but they don't sit there idle. They inflame the surrounding cell. Okay, so we have seen the rotten onion. If there is one rotten onion. in a bag of onion other onion get also rotten so senescent cells are like a rotten onion they sits there and then they inflame the other cell now the most important cause of aging is called as information theory of aging and which has been put forward by i told uh, the scientist name as david sinclair from harvard university united states of america so we have seen that there is a genome and there is epigenome now this epigenome control which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off okay so the identity of cell is in the epigenome and epigenome is transform or altered by our lifestyle and environment for example if you are using laptop if the computer or hardware is genome the software is like epigenome 
okay so we have discussed that because of epigenome the the identity of cell is remained that's why the neuron behave like a neuron not like a skin cell and the nephron behave like a nephron not like a neuron so this is because of this epigenetic information okay now what happens as the cell divides this epigenetic information get lost and scientists said this loss of this epigenetic information may be a cause of aging so we have so the scientist has studied that in primordial cell there were two types of gene the gene a is caretaker gene and gene b is silencing gene okay so gene a is genome and gene b is epigenome the function of gene a is controlled by gene b now when condition is stable suitable the silencing protein produced by gene b will silence gene a and the cell will start to reproduce but when the condition is not suitable the gene b will stimulate gene a and the reproduction will stop and then the dna repair will start okay so during dna repair the cell do not reproduce so i hope you understood it okay on a lighter note once mulla nasruddin went to meet his friend the friend when he saw mulla nasruddin he was very astonished he said why did your lip become so black and swollen so mulla nasruddin said i went in a railway station to see off my wife she was going to her mother's home and seeing the train going away i become so happy i become so ecstatic that i kissed the railway engine and it was very hot and i just burn my lip okay <laughs> okay so in the home when the wife is there the husband is under control he behave properly so wife is like epigenome gene b and the husband is like gene a the activity of the husband is controlled by wife when you remove this wife okay the husband behave in a erratic manner okay so i hope i was able to explain about gene a and gene b okay and this epigenome we have discussed that it depends upon the environmental factors and lifestyle now this were in a primordial cell what about human being and the scientist found that in human the equivalent of gene b is a sirtuin genes mtor gene and amk protein ampk protein okay so these are the epigenome in a human being which is responsible for the dna repair autophagy energy conser conservation and maintaining the health of the cell and this is called as a longevity apparatus longevity epigenomic apparatus okay so when there is a dna uh, there is a dna damage this epigenome goes there this sirtuin genes goes there they repair the genes and they again come back when there is a damage again they go again come back but if the dna damage become repeated and excessively the epigenome the sirtuin genes doesn't come back and this is the cause of aging this is means the cell lose their identity and it causes aging so this longevity gene like amp uh, sirtuin genes mtor genes and ampk protein is responsible for maintaining our health and our life span okay just remember this so these sirtuin genes are longevity genes there are seven in numbers 1 to 7 the sirtuin genes is called because it is uh, the silencing information regulator they regulate the information of the cell okay so this cell this sirtuin genes is very essential for the dna repair and maintaining our longevity there are other longevity gene called as mtor gene this is called as mammalian target of rapamycin gene and it regulates metabol metabolism and this when there is less protein 
these genes get silenced and they hunker down the cell and then the dna repair occurs so these mtor genes are very sensitive to protein intake if there is less protein intake then this mtor genes causes the dna repair when there is excess protein this mtor genes do not cause dna repair okay so excess protein is bad for our health okay the bare minimum protein is good for our health or slightly less protein will activate this longevity genes the third make a third protein is called as ampk protein and it is responded to uh, there is evolved to respond to low energy level so if there is excess energy this ampk protein doesn't do anything but if there is less energy for short period of time then this ampk protein is activated and they repair the cells and make it in a healthy states okay so this longevity genes like sirtuin genes mtor and ampk this apparatus is essential for autophagy cellular repair energy conservation and keeping the health cell uh, keeping the cell healthy clear clear this point right in the chat box right in the chat box is it clear so take home message as far as this genetic information is concerned that there are longevity genes in our body called sirtuin genes mtor and ampk which is which is required to increase our health span and life span clear right in the chat box clear so that i'm going to discuss now how to increase your life span and health span how to activate this longevity genes so that we can increase our life span and health span right in the chat box clear if any doubt you can put it in the chat box thank you linda that's clear right in the chat box if there is any doubt till now so just remember that this longevity gene is essential for our health and to prevent the aging thank you rahul ji clear so we'll continue with our now we'll discuss how to increase our life span and health span okay now there is a mechanism called as homosis hormesis now what is hormesis now just i would like to share one story with you once a prince went to lord gautam buddha to become his disciple he said lord i want to become your disciple but the other disciple said advise buddha don't make him your disciple because he is a prince he always used to live a life comfortably he won't be able to sustain as your disciple but king the but uh, 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 lord buddha admit in his ashram now what happens this prince stop eating and after few week he become so weak he was on verge of dying the lord buddha calls him up and ask him prince when you were young you used to play a guitar tell me if the strings of guitar are too tight whether it will produce music the prince said no it won't produce music the lord buddha said if the strings are too loose whether it will produce music the the prince said no it won't produce music then the lord buddha said then when it will produce a good music the prince said when the strings are not too tight and not too loose then buddha said this is the life you have to follow a middle path when you are prince you used to live life very comfortably now you have become disciple but you have gone into extreme end you have stopped eating altogether and it has affected your health badly 
you have to have a middle path no over indulgence no under indulgence a middle path okay so if you follow a middle path then we will able to lead a life healthy as well as happily so we know that we are under constant stress if there is excess stress it will kill us it will kill or it will cause lot of disease if there is less stress and then there would be no energy or no enthusiasm in our life it would be boredom and apathy so if there is a moderate stress then our life is meaningful we are able to achieve our goal in our life okay similarly if we make our body uncomfortable for a short period of time put this longevity gene under stress for a short period of time this longevity genes get activated and they will repair the dna and they will stimulate the autophagy autophagy means the dead organelles are removed the disease organelles of the cells are removed and replaced by new organelles so this dna repair will occur the autophagy will occur and the cells are maintained in a healthy state okay so this is called as homeostasis so you have to keep your body in uncomfortable state for a short period of time temporarily so that it will activate this longevity gene mechanism okay so how to put your body in an uncomfortable state so now again this graph you can see as the stress increases our performance increases and if there is a excess stress our performance falls down so if there is a less stress then there is a boredom apathy in our life also our longevity genes goes into sleep if you put a lot of stress then also it will kill the cell there has to be moderate amount of stress so less stress is a problem more stress is a problem optimum moderate stress is required for health as well as happiness okay I, on a lighter note once the delegates went to visit a mental asylum so the doctor was showing the delegates about the state of the inmates they went into room number 1 there the condition of inmate was in a very, the the the, uh, the inmate was in a very pity state he was just crying he was kissing one photograph he was hugging the photograph the delegates asked the doctor why he has become mad the doctor said he was in love with a girl named lucy whom he didn't marry and he couldn't marry that's why he become mad then they went into room number 2 there the patient was in a very agitated state he was hitting the photograph with his shoes and he was tearing the photograph the delegates asked the doctor why he became mad the doctor said he married the same girl named lucy okay so less stress is a problem more stress is a problem optimum amount of stress is required for health and longevity now how you can put your body to the moderate stress to increase your health as well as life span okay so the first principle is calorie restriction and doing intermittent fasting okay so this is the sure way to prolong life to eat less so we have seen that the ampk protein the uh, sirtuin proteins and mtor are activated when there is a caloric restriction okay so again middle path if you eat so less that you become malnourished or starve again you will have a lot of disease and you will cut your life span but if you eat a lot of things a lot of protein a lot of fat a lot of sugar again it will lead to diseases so you have to eat bare minimum to maintain your health okay so slightly restrict the calorie okay so how the calorie restriction is helpful so the study was done in a rat and they found that those rat who were given a calorie restriction they have extended their life life span by 15 to 20% some in 30% as well okay so just 
eat the food to keep your health not excess not less and this engage the longevity gene mechanism and stimulate the autophagy and dna repair the study was done in okinawa now the okinawa is a place or in japan which is a part of blue zone where people usually live 90 years 100 years and they are active in their 100 years as well so they found that they take 20% less calorie as compared to the mainland japanese people and that's why there's less in incidence of chronic disorder and they have a long life span again there was a study done in 1991 to 1993 in arizona it is called as biosphere 2 research so what they did they put eight people in a ecological dome of 3 acres and they have to grow their own food if they have to eat so it was very difficult for them to grow and eat so they used to grow bare minimum to keep their health and prevent malnutrition and what they found the scientists found that the the body mass index decreased by 15 to 20% in these people bp decreased by 25% blood sugar decreased by 25% and cholesterol by 30% so if you have a minimum calorie restriction then you have immense health benefits okay so as far as possible try to eat a bare minimum possible not excess not too less next thing is intermittent fasting now what happens our ancestor used to eat two to three times per day and their dinner used to be before sunset so they used to eat in a, a span of 8 hours and 16 hour was a fasting state and during this fasting state our body was rejuvenating the dna was repairing there was autophagy but because of the changing in lifestyle we are eating we are snacking we are eating many many times per day and because of that there is insulin resistance and this insulin is resistance is causing obesity diabetes heart disease also okay so in the research they found that the rat who were periodically kept on a fasting every third day their life span increased by 15 to 20% okay as compared to the rat who were regularly fed in one of the blue zone called ikaria in greece they follow the orthodox greek church which call for fasting in half of the time in a year so they are always alternate day they are fasting or almost one 80 days in year they are fasting and it is common to live 90 years 100 years in this zone again the bama county in the southern china these people eat a small meal around noon and a large meal around sunset and they have a 16 hour of fasting and they have a healthy life span they age 90 100 year they live life till 90 to 100 years so you can do a fasting the way you feel comfortable okay what i do i take a breakfast at 11 o'clock and one meal at 5 o'clock that's it i don't eat anything in between i don't drink tea i don't take any milk nothing i eat only two times okay so you eat a food in a span of 8 hours two to three times and give body rest for 16 hours if it is not possible you can skip your meal many times per week for example you can skip your meal uh, dinner two times per week so just start skipping your diet now we have been bombarded that don't skip your meal it will reduce your sugar it will have bad effect no research has said that if you put your body to fasting you give hunger to your body for temporary period of time not a sustained period of time it is good for your health okay there are a lot of research on intermittent fasting if you do intermittent fasting you will 
Th that is the only treatment for obesity. It will reverse your diabetes, your reverse your heart block. Okay, so start doing intermittent fasting. Now, what we eat also matters. In there has been a lot of studies, and they found that the animal protein, those who consume a lot of animal protein, there is high incidence of heart disease and cancer. The red meat contain a carnitine, which a gut bacteria convert into chemical called as TAMO, and which is suspected to cause heart disease. Okay. So, if you decrease the protein intake by eating plant-based vegetarian diet, you will eat all the essential amino acid, which is uh, the quantity which is bare minimum to sustain your life. And this will activate your longevity gene mechanism and it will increase your health span as well as your lifespan. Okay, so is it clear that protein is good for our health, but excess protein is bad for our health. Animal derived protein is bad for our health. Casein containing protein in milk is bad for our health. The plant-based vegetarian diet is good for our health. And this has been proved in all research across the globe. Okay, you do any research and you will find that the plant-based Vegetarian diet is good for your health. Now, what we should eat to increase our lifespan as well as health span. So we should eat food, not too much and mostly plant-based. Okay. So whole unprocessed food, colorful fruits, vegetables, salads, sprouted beans, cereal, pulses, brown rice, seed, flax seed. Okay. So millets. So you eat a lot of unprocessed food. As far as carbohydrate is concerned, eat complex carbohydrate, no simple sugar. Sugar is the most poisonous things on earth. Okay. And the causes of obesity, diabetes, you can have a root cause in consumption of excess sugar, excess high fructose corn syrup, which is a part of all processed food. Protein, try to avoid animal proteins or eat it bare minimum once or twice in a month, but eat maximum veg vegetable protein. Fat, avoid refined fat because which is highly inflammatory. Avoid trans fat in Delta. Eat fat which is naturally present in a food, like in nuts, ground nuts, and eat fat bare minimum. Eat food which is grown on a healthy soil, that is organic food. Because what happens because of this excessive fertilizer and insecticide, it enters on our food chain and it causes DNA damage. Eat certain food which has been pre digested by bacteria or fungi like yogurts, dahi, because it contains vitamin B12 and probiotic. Our gut is lined by good bacteria. The diversity and quantity of this microbiome determine our health. And this bacteria requires oligosaccharide to sustain. And this oligosaccharide is present in green leafy vegetable in fibers. So if you eat plant-based vegetarian diet, your microbiome would be diverse and you would remain healthy. Which food you should avoid? You should avoid caffeinated sugar to drink, junk food, sweet, fried food, excess salt, dalda, ice cream, polished rice, maida and margarine. Avoid packaged food because what happens during packaging, they remove the nutrients from the food. There are a lot of chemicals, coloring agents and preservative. This is bad for our health. Okay. And it is packaged in plastic. Again, the plastic causes DNA damage. Avoid sugar in any form. As far as wheat is concerned, do not eat refined flour because we remove husk, we remove fibers, whatever flour is there, it has high glycemic index. So do not eat refined flour, do not remove husk, do not eat maida and avoid bread. How to eat? I have told you breakfast should be must, it should be heavy. It is said that you should have breakfast like a king, the lunch like a prince and your dinner like a pauper. Okay, so 
according to the activity we are active whole day eat lot of food during day and do not eat after sunset or eat as early as possible you eat 2 to 3 times in a window of 8 to 10 hours so that you get 16 to 18 hours as a, a fasting period during which the cell regen rejuvenate and do intermittent fasting and not last but not the least have a adequate intake of water drink at least 10 glass of water have sip of water regularly so that you do not feel thirsty okay how much to eat you have to eat 70 to 80% of your stomach capacity okay so everything clear about diet in plan based diet eat in a span of 8 hours to 10 hours do intermittent fasting and drink adequate amount of water the next thing to increase your longevity is physical exercise in the research it is found that if you do regular physical exercise it will boost nad level now this nad is required for sirtuin genes if your nad level increase your sirtuin genes get activated your uh, longevity genes activated your lifespan health span increase again the uh, exercise increase the amount of capillaries in your muscle boost your mitochondria lengthen the telomeres boost your heart and lung okay so if you do 30 minutes exercise every day for at least 5 days per week you can increase your lifespan by one decade okay so exercise activate this longevity genes now what type of exercise you should do now you should do exercise which increase your stamina flexibility and strength the exercise which increase your stamina are like aerobic walking running cycling swimming dancing okay the exercise which increase your flexibility is like yoga and various stretching exercise and the exercise which increase your strength is the weight training so you can do 10 minutes of uh, aerobic exercise 10 minutes of yoga and 10 minutes of weight training every day now there is a difference between the exercise which activate the longevity gene you have to put a moderate stress to your body then this longevity genes will be activated so if you stroll if you walk leisurely it won't activate your longevity gene okay so how to activate your longevity gene so you have to increase your heart rate to 70 to 85% of your maximum heart rate so how do you calculate your maximum heart rate it is calculated by formula 220 uh, 220 minus h okay so for example if you are 40 years then your maximum heart rate would be 220 minus 40 that is 180 so 70 to 85% would be 126 to 153 so you can start with 126 and go up to 153 so if you have your heart rate increased during your aerobic exercise to 70 to 85% of your maximum heart rate then you will get benefit of the activating your longevity gene so how do you differentiate whether you are doing aerobic walking or not so if you cover a distance of 1 km in 15 minutes then it's strolling it is not useful if you cover in 10 minutes then it is brisk walking also it has not much effect but if you cover in 7.5 minutes 1 km distance then it is called as aerobic walking so running aerobic walking will activate your longevity genes and increase your health span as well as life span again the high intensity intermittent training is also useful for longevity so how to determine whether you are having exercise which is activating your longevity gene so you should sweat and you should be able barely able to speak few words so if you do this kind of exercise you will activate your longevity gene and mind you if you eat lot and exercise the benefit would be minimized so you have to eat properly doing intermittent fasting as well as exercise to activate your longevity gene the next thing is temperature now what happens we have been told that we should remain in a thermo neutral environment continuously this kind of leisure leisure also make our longevity gene lazy 
we have to give discomfort to this longevity gene by temporarily exposing your body to cold environment or hot environment and if you do it then you will activate this longevity gene and there has to be a lakshman ratio there has to be you should not cross because if you want to expose your body to the cold it should be for a short period of time if you expose for long period of time then it may lead to hypothermia frostbite which is bad for our health okay also if you want to expose your body to the hot environment you can expose during the early during morning time if in afternoon time when the sun is em emitting a lot of heat waves then it will cause dna damage so expose your body to the cold so that, for example take a cold bath every day or you take cold bath one day and hot water bath uh, next day so you will expose your body to this uh, extreme temperature for short period of time and then you will get the benefit of activating this longevity gene or you can keep your window open you can walk you can uh, avoid taking blanket while you sleep so that your body is exposed to some kind of cold or you can take a sauna bath for uh, exposing your body for hot temperature okay certain things one you should avoid if you want to prolong your life so one should stop smoking and alcohol consumption in the research it's found that these are the commonest cause of diseases and shorten shortening the life span so stop smoking and barely uh, consume bare minimum alcohol if possible you can stop consuming alcohol avoid going to sunlight for prolonged period of time because if you expose your body to sunlight for prolonged period of time it will damage your dna for short period it's good but for long period it's bad okay avoid plastic plastic contain pcb which damage the dna avoid ct scan as far as possible if you want to do the scanning do mri rather than ct scan so avoid ct scan x ray as far as possible avoid chemical use pesticide and fertilizer if you do this you will definitely prolong your life by one decade the next thing is sleep well in the research it is found that during whole day our body undergo wear and tear and during sleep time this body undergo healing mechanism the autophagy the dna repairs occur during sleep the digestion occur during sleep our memory is consolidated during sleep our fat is burn in sleep okay so if you want to lead healthy life then you have to have 7 to 7 and a half hour of uninterrupted sleep every night okay no compromise if you do a lot of exercise if you do it healthy diet but if you do not have a adequate amount of sleep it will cause sleep debt and it will have bad effect on your longevity as well as your health so for longevity sleep at least 7 hour every day laughter when we are small we laugh a lot but as we grow older we just forget laughing okay and it is found that those who laugh a lot they have healthier life their life span is increased and those who do not laugh they have depression anxiety short life span and they are affected by a lot of health problem what happens when you laugh you exhale and then you take a deep breath so it increases your vital capacity of lung your oxygen level in your body increases your cells are rejuvenate rejuvenated when you laugh the blood supply to your face increases it is like a jogging of your face so if you want to get rid of wrinkle or if you want that your face do, it should not have wrinkle laugh a lot okay when you laugh the blood of the coronary artery which supplies our heart dilates and the blood supply to the heart increases so your heart becomes strong okay when you laugh you forget about your stress you forget about your worry and you 
become thoughtless. It's kind of a meditation as well. So you get rid of stress and anxiety by laughing. So if you want to prolong your health span as well as lifespan, laugh a lot. Watch the comedy uh, movies or YouTube uh, uh, clip of Mr. Bean or Charlie Chaplin and laugh a lot. Laugh like a child. Actually, what happens? The aging is a mental thing also. A 30 years, maybe mentally 80 year old or 80 year, maybe mentally 30 year old. It depends upon your mindset. Just keep a child awake and alive inside you. Behave like a child. Don't take life too seriously. Laugh at your life. Laugh at your shortcoming. Laugh at your problem. Okay. So like a child, be like a child and laugh a lot to increase your health span and lifespan. Next thing is a social support. Now what happens because of this fast life, we are not able to share our emotions or problem with other people. The wife has no time for husband, husband has no time for wife and the parents has no time to listen to the child. We do not share our emotion problem with other, they keep they build up inside us and they come out in the form of physical as well, as well as mental disorder. Okay. You have to give outlet to your emotion, your problem, your feeling by talking to your friends or your family members. And there has to be somebody in your social circle whom you can go and you can share your problem without being getting judged or without being exploited. So have somebody whom you can share with your problem. There has to be certain social support who can help you when you are in problem, like a financial problem. So have a kind of a social support and in the research, because the research started in 1930 in Harvard University. Now, Robert Waldinger is the director. And the study still continued since last seven decades. They have collected the health, the family, history of thousands of people, hundreds of people are still alive. And what they found that the most important cause of health, longevity, happiness is good family, good relationship. Okay. So have a good relation, have a good social support, have a good friend circle and share your thoughts, your emotions, your problem with them. On a lighter note, once a friend of Sigmund Freud, you all know Sigmund Freud was a father of psychiatry, asked him, people come to you for counseling. They expose, they narrate so many things to you. So many personal things, so many things, you do not become a mad listening to that. Sigmund Freud said, they come to me. It's right. You are right. They narrate their emotion to me. It's right. You are right. But who told you that I listened to them? <laughs> okay. So when during counseling, the people power their emotions and they get rid of these emotions. So just have somebody in your family with whom you can share your emotions. If you don't have, you can write in a diary your emotion, your problem, and give emotional outlet, give outlet to your emotions. Have a good social support. Communication with partner. Okay. Now, we all know that the discord with your partner is responsible for stress and we we have seen that stress causes DNA damage and it shorten your lifespan. So if you have a healthy partner, then the probability that your lifespan and your health span will be long is certain. So how to increase, uh, have a good communication with your partner. So first is love. You have to love your partner. So what do you mean by love? Love means, L means listen carefully to your partner. Carefully means listen with your ear, eyes, and soul, whatever your partner is sharing with you. O means overlook minor mistake. 
V means have a positive vibration and E is encourage your partner. So if you love your partner, then a lot of uh, the friction will uh, uh, reduced. Appreciate your partner. Okay, and appreciate consistently. On a lighter note, Mullah Nasruddin went to his friend and said, my wife always fight with me. Give me some simple solution. The friend said, have you ever praised and appreciated your, your wife's food she prepared? Mullah Nasruddin said, no. Then he said, go and appreciate your wife's food today. The Mullah Nasruddin went, the wife served him biryani. The, the Mullah Nasruddin started eating biryani and he said, oh my God, this is the most tasty biryani I have ever ate. Okay, you have prepared a fantastic biryani. Mullah Nasruddin thought that wife will become very happy. But she became very angry and she started hitting Mullah Nasruddin with the balan, with the stick. Mullah Nasruddin said, what? I have never appreciated you. Now today I'm appreciating you and you are hitting me. My wife's, uh, the wife said, since last 10 year, I am giving you biryani, but you have never praised me. And today I have given a biryani, which the neighboring lady has given and you are having so much of praise for this biryani, okay? So appreciate your wife consistently every day. And help her in a house core, say sorry. It is said that if you are wrong and you say sorry, you are ordinary person. If you are in a doubt and if you say sorry, you are wise person. But if you are right, still you say sorry, then you are husband. Okay, so use a lot of sorry word. Respect your wife. Okay. On a lighter note, ek bar kya hota hai ki Mulla Nasruddin apni wife ko bolta hai ki mai kaam ke liye dusre shahar ja raha hu. To mujhe jab letter likhna hai to upar likhna hai ka pran se pran se pyare Mulla Nasruddin. Fir letter likhne ka aur niche likhne ka charno ki dasi aur fir tumhara sign karne ka. Okay. After some days, Mullah Nasruddin receives the letter and he writes on the top of Charno Ke Das Mullah Nasruddin and he writes on the bottom of the Pranon Ki Piasi, wife's signature. Okay. So give respect to your partner. Don't treat them as your slave. Just respect them. Give a lot of hug to your partner. If you give a lot of hug, it will secrete a hormone called as oxytocin and it will reduce your strain and increase your health span. Take her on a weekly date, send her a love letter, or if nothing solve the problem, take her for shopping and give her a gift. Okay. Next thing to prolong life is do yoga. I have told you that do at least 10 minutes of yoga every day. Have a simple pose, do Surya Namaskar and it would be sufficient. Next thing is Pranayama. Now, Prana means our life energy. Yama is to control. Okay. So you have to control your breathing. You, you know the rate of breathing of a dog. Okay. He breathes very fast. And the lifespan of dog is 15 to 18 years. The breathing rate of butterfly is in thousands per minute. The lifespan is for three to four days. The breathing rate of tortoise is, is very slow. The lifespan is 180 days, 200 days. Same is for whales. So it is said that your breathing rate and your lifespan is inversely proportional. Faster you breathe, lesser your lifespan. Okay, so what happens because of the stress, we are breathing very fast, we are breathing very shallow. So we are not taking the health of our lung totally and we are breathing very fast and we will, this will shorten our life. That's why we have to start to take a deep breath at least for a few minutes of a day and try to do it in every day for as long as possible. So the first and foremost thing is a diaphragmatic breathing. So means you have to take a deep breath so that 
your stomach should come out and your chest should expand then you should stop for a moment and then you should slowly exhale to begin you can count 1 to 4 when you inhale and 1 to 4 when you exhale and then you can increase this period the inhalation is called as purak and the exhalation is called as rechak in ayurveda and the dis- the interval between purak and rechak is antakumbak and after exhalation and before inhalation is called as bayakumbak now in pranayama this bayakumbak has given a lot of weightage and now i came to know that why it has given a lot of weightage because when you exhale and when you stop then you will create a kind of an artificial asphyxia in your body and your cell will temporarily come under stress and this will activate your longevity gene okay so that is the importance of this bayakumbak means you take deep breath stop for a moment then you exhale and at the exhalation then try to keep the breath as long as possible and then you take a inhalation the more bayakumbak you do the more you will have uh, increase your life span as well as health span okay so i'll just demonstrate for you so just inhale then exhale at the end of exhalation just stop your breath as far as possible and then in a again so this bayakumbak is very important to maintain your health so there are other types of pranayama you can learn on a youtube but this diaphragmatic breathing and this bayakumbak will help you to prolong your health span as well as life span meditation now what happens we are always guilty about our past and we are always worried about our future and we are never in a present moment okay the past is a history future is a mystery present is a gift that's why it's called as present and mindful meditation teach you how to remain in the present moment and in the research it is found that if you remain in the present moment you would lead healthy happy stress free and more productive life and there has been 4 4000 research done on mindful meditation across the globe so what is mindful meditation mindfulness is living in the present moment not worried about our past or future accepting life as it is in a non judgmental way okay so how do you do mindful meditation now you can go on youtube last month i have conducted this kind of live workshop on mindful meditation you can search uh, just put a uh, dr sunil sable mindful meditation on a search and then you will get the recording of it but i will just like to explain briefly here so you can practice mindful meditation by sitting or lying down and you have to just observe your breath at your nostril air coming in air going out air coming in air going out okay and when you have some thoughts in your mind you have to bring back your attention at the nostril and this is a mindful meditation mindful meditation is not concentration mindful meditation is not you should become uh, empty in your mind mindful meditation is awareness awareness about your breathing awareness about your thoughts emotions your sensation and surrounding that is mindful meditation and mindful meditation you should start practicing but you should utilize mindful meditation in your day to day activity of your life if you do these steps and fall asleep your sleep will become mindful meditation if you eat and just being aware of food its texture its smell its taste then your eating will become mindful meditation if you are doing your job and just being aware of your job and not worrying about other things your job can become mindful meditation so start doing mindful meditation and apply this mindfulness in each and every aspect of your life so see it will completely transform your life and you would lead meaningful healthy and happy life have a optimistic attitude toward life in the tribal area it is 
there is a concept called as hodo killing now there is a spiritual leader in the tribal community he has some bone in his hand and if he points that bone at somebody then that person dies now is it is there any magic no there is no magic what happens if if that a uh, spiritual leader point a bone to a person that person feel and behave in a such a way that he is going to die he accept that he is going to die and his body secret that kind of chemicals in its body and it leads to his death also there was research done in a uh, inmates they they were given a death sentence so Uh, the uh, P, uh, the uh, the police in the uh, prison told them that instead of giving you the hanging or electric shock we are going to expose you to the poisonous snake and the poisonous snake will bite you and it will lead to your killing then they covered their eyes and they divided into two groups one group they have a real snake and in other they just give a pin prick a small needle prick and what the needle prick lead to the death of that people now how did it happen because they behave in a such a way that they have bitten by the snake and they are going to die and they died it so our life our body everything our chemical our genes also depends upon our thought okay our belief system our belief system create thoughts our thoughts create action our action creates our uh, character and our character create our destiny so our everything depends upon our thought and if we have optimistic thoughts and optimistic view to our life then we will have increase increase our health as well as life span and we will lead a meaningful life okay so be optimistic attitude toward your life now there are certain things which occur in your life which we cannot change so mark twain has said god give me serenity to accept the things which i cannot change courage to change the things which i can change and wisdom to differentiate between two so sometime we have to accept certain things in your life you have to be contented in your life what happens we are never contented we are always unhappy what we have and always try to find happiness in the things which we don't have on a lighter note once mulla nasruddin read ad in a newspaper the ad was about a rich man he wanted to get his daughter married so mulla nasruddin went to that rich person's house the rich man shows mulla nasruddin his daughter he says this is my 30 year old daughter if you marry her i will give you 30 lakh as a dowry this is a 40 year old daughter if you marry her i will give 40 lakh as a dowry and this is a 50 year daughter if you marry her you will get 50 lakh as a dowry the mulla nasruddin thinks oh as the age increases the dowry increases so mulla nasruddin asks that rich man do you have any daughter who is 100 year old okay so we are never contented with what we have and this kind of unhappiness create a negative impact on our health and decrease our health as well as life span so be contented with whatever you have have a very high goal but be contented with whatever you have have a purpose in your life in the research it is found that those who have purpose in your life meaningful purpose they live a long life so have a purpose in your life happiness live a life happiness now what is happiness whether it is depends upon the external factor like name money fame or it is internal phenomenon so i would like to share one story with you once a old lady was trying to find out something outside her home and it was dark so the people in a neighborhood came to help her after some time the people asked this old lady what are you uh, finding and may we help you to find that thing the old lady said i have lost a needle and i am trying to find it out the people asked the needle is too small can you tell me where you have lost so that we can find it 
the old lady said actually i've lost it inside my home but as i am poor i don't have a electricity light inside my home and there is a street light i am trying to find out outside okay the people said are you mad you have lost your needle inside and you are trying to find it outside the old lady said this is a matter of needle but you all people has lost happiness inside and you are trying to find out outside right? then how mad you people are okay so we have lost the happiness inside then happiness is inside it's not outside phenomenon you can become happiness right now if you decide it happiness is not what you want but what you have happiness is in less not in many happiness is in a present moment not in any future okay so try to find happiness and lead happy life uh, happy life to uh, have a longevity nishkam karma in bhagavad gita lord krishna has said karmanya vadikaraste ma phalashu kadachana so what he says ki you should concentrate your efforts uh, uh, all your energy and efforts and you should not worry about its result okay so what we are always worried about the results and forget about the efforts so have a big goal in your life but give all your attention and energy to the efforts the happiness is not reaching at the top of mountain but the happiness is in a journey enjoy the journey if you fall down get up and uh, keep your march to your, your goal but concentrate on your efforts and accept whatever results you get as a fruit given by the god sorry there was a disconnection problem okay so welcome back uh, so we were discussing about the blue zone okay so these are the geographical area where people ordinarily live life till 90 years 100 years and not only they are living life till 100 years they are living it actively they are working they are driving their vehicle okay they are working in their field they are helping other people so they are living a life which is healthy as well as meaningful okay so which are this geographical area this is called as blue zone and this is these are ikaria in greece sardinia in italy okinawa in japan nicoa peninsula in costa rica loma linda california usa okay so there has been lot of study done on this population and it is found that the main reason behind their long healthy life is not genetic okay genetic only plays 20 to 3% role in their longevity so what are the other factors which determine their longevity and these are environmental influence including diet lifestyle again how they take the life their purpose in life so these are the factors which determine their longevity they primarily eat 95% of plant based diet although most of the group are not strict vegetarian but they consume non veg in a limited manner so they consume four to five times per month there has been number of studies including one in over half a million of people and it has shown that if you avoid meat it significantly decreases the chances of chronic disorders like obesity diabetes heart disease and associated mortality so what are the diet in the blue zone so the people in the blue zone consumes more of vegetable they consumes more of legumes whole grains nuts okay so lot of unprocessed plant based diet that is their main diet now other things they fast and they follow 80% rule they not only reduce the caloric intake their caloric intake is almost 80 to 90% of their recommended calorie intake but they also do intermittent fasting in the okinawa 
they've there is a terminology called as hara hachibo means they stop eating before the stomach is 80% full so they eat till 80% of the stomach capacity and in the research it is found that if you eat slowly then you tend to consume food in a less quantity because it takes at least 20 minutes for the gut to send signals to the brain that the stomach is full if you eat a lot of food before 20 minutes then you will not feel the satiety so try to eat slowly as well also fasting is a part of their daily life for example the ikarian which is present in a greek they follow orthodox uh, christian uh, principles and they do at least fasting for half of their uh, life span means in one year at almost 150 to 170 days they do fasting and once a study has shown that during this religious holiday the fasting lead to lower blood cholesterol and lower body mass index okay so there has been lot of studies on fasting which we have already discussed and fasting is the main reason for longevity now the next parameter the next cause for their longevity is they keep on moving whole day exercise is built in their daily life they do not go in a gym to do exercise whole day their body is moving and whole day they are doing a kind of moderate exercise okay so they will work in the kitchen they will work in the garden they will work in the field they will uh, help other people they will do daily course so they will keep on moving their body and that is also one of the contributing factor for their longevity now what happens because of industrialization we have become a couch potato we have stopped moving our body we keep on sitting on a chair for a long period of time again come back home and then watch television sitting on the couch and we consume a lot of food so we have become a sedentary people so we our body is meant to move that's why we have to move your body so you have to do exercise then when you are sitting for one hour just get up do some stretching do some walking okay as far as possible instead of sitting try to stand okay so standing is better than sitting and walking is better than standing if you want to go to third floor fourth floor instead of using lift use staircase if you want to go to market instead of taking your vehicle go walking so just keep moving your body because our we as a human is meant to move our ancestors used to live in the jungle so they used to walk miles together to get the food okay after agricultural age they used to go to field again you can go to a rural area and you will find that the people go to their field walking they work in the field whole day they are moving their bodies but when we go to city we follow the sedentary lifestyle then we don't move our body and that leads to obesity diabetes heart disease and curtails the life span okay so keep on moving your body so dietary restriction we have mentioned that dietary restriction is the important factors which is responsible for longevity they get enough sleep okay so adequate amount of sleep is very essential which we have seen now other trait and habit which is associated with longevity are these people in blue zone are religious and spiritual they believe in certain highest order so when you believe in certain highest order there is a less chances of depression because you know there is somebody who will help you okay and second thing when they go in Uh, when they are religious they go into temple church then there is a social support so there is less incidence of depression they have a purpose in life okay so they have a purpose if you have purpose in life then you 
you want to live a long life you want to live a very healthy life so people in blue zone tend to have a life purpose known as ikigai in okinawa or plan d vida in nikoya so if your purpose in life then there is a reduced risk of death possibly because of psychological well being the third the next trait is older and younger people live together so studies have shown that grandparents who look after their grandchildren have lower risk of death next is a healthy social network so your social network which is called as moi in okinawa can affect your health so if you have a good social network then they will tend to help you in your need and as well as they will give you a psychological support now these were the characteristic of people their lifestyle in a blue zone now there are certain animals where there is a negligible senescence they don't get old according to their age and because of negligible senescence so some uh, animals like tortoise salamanders jellyfish they do not age according to their uh, they do not become old according to their age they have a prolonged life now there has been lot of studies now i have discussed how to increase your life span as well as health span without taking any drugs okay now there has been lot of research done all across the world how to increase the life span by doing the help of drugs hormones or any gene therapy so we're going to discuss what are the research which has been done and it is postulated that after 10 years the life span may increase up to 100 years then 120 years 150 years healthy life span with the help of this kind of research which has been done across the globe now the first thing is a senolytic drugs so we have seen that this senescent cell which are like a rotten onion which make other onion bad this senescent cell make other healthy unhealthy or diseased so scientists are trying to find out the drugs which will kill this senolytic cell now you can see this mice which has become old fat fragile because of lot of senescent cell they have given the drugs which clear the senescent cell and you can see it that the it is converted into very healthy young mice okay so they are doing a lot of research to find out the drugs which will kill the senolytic cell other approach is that they are trying to find out the drug which will stop senescent cell to harm the surrounding healthy cell okay and other approach also what happens the senescent senescent cell they just make themselves in a such a way that they keep themselves away from the immune attack so they the scientists are trying to find out how the immune cell can attack the senescent cell and kill them now the next thing is telomerase enzyme now we have seen that the length of telomeres which are at the end of chromosome is responsible for the longevity and if the length of telomeres decrease our life span decreases and there is a lot of uh, chronic disorders and there and there is an enzyme which is called as telomerase which is responsible for the stability of these telomeres so they are trying to find out figure out how to increase this telomerase activity so that the length of the telomeres can be maintained next is induced pluripotent stem cell now stem cells pluripotent stem cells are the cells which can be converted into any kind of cell maybe neurons of a brain nephrons of a kidney then skin cell or heart cell so it can be transformed into any cell okay so now there has been research done by the scientist known as yamanaka and this scientist has been awarded nobel prize for that so what he has done he took out the cells of a human being then he gave the yamanaka factors and then that cell is converted into pluripotent stem cell okay so this plur from this pluripotent uh, from this pluripotent stem cell which can make any kind of cell and with the help of 3d printing we can make an organ from that person so instead of organ transplant from other people and giving a lot of immunosuppressant 
we can take out the cell induced with the help of yamanaka factors make it pluripotent stem cell prepare a kind of cell for example brain is damaged because of stroke you will make a artificial brain and then you will replace or if the kidney is damaged you will replace kidney or something like that so there has been lot of studies being done on this induced pluripotent stem cell so you can see these are the adult fibroblasts so they added this uh, yamanaka factors and it has converted into pluripotent stem cells so from that you can derive cardiomyocytes like a uh, cells of heart adipocyte like a cells of uh, uh, fat or dopaminergic neuron you can give it in a parkinson patients neuronal cells you can give in a patients who has a neuronal damage or a pancreatic beta cells you can give in a diabetic patients or hemopoietic progenitor cells you can give in a various cancer or a plastic anemia so next mechanism is repairing of the mitochondria okay so we know that the mitochondria is a power of house of energy so they are developing a small molecule which can repair the damage to the mitochondrial dna by using a mechanism called as shift effect so what is shift effect it consists in forcing the mitochondria to compete with each other for the nutrient making sure that only healthy mitochondria survive so the shift effect evolved to get rid of mutation in the mitochondrial dna the next is a re rejuvenation of the thymus we know that this thymus is located behind our sternum and it produced immune cell and as we age the thymus shrinks and that's why we are more prone for diseases infection including the corona infections so scientists are trying to develop drugs a gene therapy or hormones which can rejuvenate this thymus okay so one trial of hormonal approach to thymic regrowth managed not only to increase its size and the number of new human cells in the participant it also seems to make them biologically younger overall as measured by the epigenetic clock so there has been a lot of studies done to rejuvenate thymus this is also one approach to increase the life span and health span the next approach is <clears throat> giving a sirtuin activating compound we know that sirtuin is a longevity gene or longevity protein and if you increase the activity of the sirtuin genes it will increase the dna repairs and autophagy and will make cell much younger so there are certain drugs which can increase the activity of this sirtuin genes so what are these so there has been research done on this resveratrol then nad which is uh, produced from vitamin b3 and niacin then nr called as nicotinamide riboside which is a precursor of nad nad then nmn which is nicotinamide nicotinamide mononucleotide which is found in broccoli avocado cabbage is also precursor of nad so in the research is found that the mice fed on nr or nmn boost their longevity okay mice fed on nmn the ovarian function can be regained and fertility can be restored even if it lost so can you imagine so there is a mechanism in the cell even if you are old but there is a mechanism still there if you activate that mechanism the cell can become young and the uh, fertility can be restored this nmn activate nad which in turn activate sirtuin which in turn activate the longevity mechanism and decrease the epigenetic loss of information in maintaining and restoring the youth so lot of drug has been uh, pipeline which can stimulate this sirtuin now this rapamycin is a drug which inhibit this tor that is a target of rapamycin now when this tor is inhibited the autophagy of the cell is increased and cell rejuvenate but this this rapamycin has a lot of side effects so they are trying to figure out other drugs like rapamycin but with a less side effect metformin now metformin mimic calorie restriction okay so how does it help it slow down the process by which the mitochondria convert the nutrient to energy which results in the activation of enzyme called as ampk the enzyme which respond to the low energy level and restore the function of mitochondria it also activate sirtuin 1 gene it inhibits cancer cell metabolism increase mitochondrial activity in the study done in 41000 uh, people in age group of 68 to 81 found that those who consume metformin there's a reduced likelihood of cardiovascular disease cancer dementia 
fragility and depression. So a lot of research being done on these drugs, metformin, which is commonly used for diabetes, it is going to get, uh, it would be used as an anti-aging drug. Xenohomesis. So we have seen that homesis is a moderate stress which increase the longevity by activating the longevity gene. And xeno is animal derived. So plant or animal, so uh, uh, any, uh, the, a plant, uh, basically xeno is a plant-based stress in a plant produced chemical which increases their survival like resveratrol in grape. Okay, so zero hematic uh, molecule are usually red, blue, orange, and yellow. So where do you get this kind of color? In a green leafy vegetable, fruits. So consume a lot of green leafy vegetable and fruit because it contains the substance which can activate your longevity gene. So next mechanism which will help to increase the lifespan of the person is a biotracking. So what do you mean by biotracking? So they will insert a kind of a, some sensor beneath our skin, which will monitor our vital function, which will monitor a lot of parameters as well as a lot of chemical in our body. And it will detect heart attack before it manifests. It will detect cancer before it is manifest. It will detect so many disorders with the help of chemical. And it will be real time information which will be sent to your doctor and with the help of artificial intelligence, if uh, that biosensor detect that the chemical which is produced before heart attack is increased, it will send a signal to your doctor and the ambulance will be parked at your doorstep, taking you to the hospital before the actual cardiac uh, heart attack manifest. Or that there may be certain cell-free DNA, which the, the cell will, the, the biosensor will detect before the cancer is manifested. Nowadays, what happens? The cancer is manifested or detected when it is in an advanced state, when it has invaded to other organs and it is in a late stage. So it, it increases the morbidity and mortality. So if you detect this cell-free DNA, the cancer would be detected before it manifests, where it is coming from and how you can treat it. So there's been a lot of studies been done on this biotracking. Vaccination, vac vaccine preventable disease can help you to improve the average lifespan. Now, we have seen till now the research which can prolong your lifespan and health span. But research is also done to reverse the age. Is it possible to reverse age? Okay, if the person is 70 years, is it possible to make it 30 years? Yes, it is possible. Now it has been proved in animal studies. Okay, so how it is possible? So this is with the help of intermittent reprogramming. So how it is done? We have seen that the MNK factor that when given to the cell, make the cell pluripotent stem cell. And, but this factor also can reset the epigenetic clock. And this is called as cellular reprogramming. And it will make the cell biologically younger. But you have to stimulate the cell intermittently. If you stimulate the cell by Yamanaka factor, continuously it would lead to cancer. Okay. So, and you have to, and again, if you continuously stimulate the cell, it will go back to the in, uh, uh, pluripl uh, pluripotent stem cell. Now, pluripotent stem cell in your body is of no use. Okay. For example, if you stimulate the heart, the normal heart cell, heart cell become pluripotent stem cell, it has no ability to pump the blood. Okay. It may form the heart cell, but it has no power to pump the blood. So, you just stimulate the cell and bring it back to certain level. For example, this is a uh, stem cell level, then you become a uh, fetus, then you could become an infant, you become a child, you become an adult, you become aged one. Okay, So they will reprogram in such a way that the cell is not brought to the pluripotent uh, stage. Okay, They will bring from say 70 years to 30 years not back to the cells which is there in a fetus. 
they will make the cell younger of 30 year age when you are 70 years if you give this factor so how this factor are given they will inject you with the adenovirus which contain this yamanaka factors and this yamanaka factors will go this go in all the cell and then they will give you give you a antibiotic to switch on this yamanaka factor for example doxycycline and they will switch on for a few weeks and that time the cell from 70 years will become 30 years okay again after few decades if it get old again they will give you a dose of doxycycline again it will come back to the 30 years so intermittent reprogramming can reverse the age and it has been proved in animal studies So aging is due to loss of epigenetic information. So if we inject mice with a virus containing Yamanaka factor or reprogramming gene with TET, it's called as 1011 translocation enzyme, which clip the methyl group from DNA, then age of the cells can be reversed. So this TET enzyme, now what happens? We have an epigenetic clock and it is determined by methylation. So methyl group tags are stick to the DNA. And as we age, the number of methyl tag increases. So if there is an enzyme which removed it is a methyl tag, a methyl tag, it will reverse the age. So they are developing this kind of technology. So in future, it is possible to give pill which can activate this state or this Yamanaka factors. So dear friends, to summarize today's talk, aging is the biggest cause of human suffering and chronic disorder like heart disease, cancer and dementia. Aging is because of the loss of epigenetic information called as information theory of aging. So doing mTOR and AMPK are longevity gene. If we modulate this longevity gene, we can increase the lifespan as well as health span. And it is called as homosis, hormesis. And it can be done with the help of calorie restriction, eating plant-based vegan diet, intermittent fasting, avoiding packaged food, Animal proteins and sugar is a key. Physical exercise, exposing your body to hot and cold temperature temporarily, seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, laughing a lot, having a social support, having an awesome relationship, doing yoga, pranayama and meditation, having optimistic outlook toward life and having a purpose in life, living a life happily and being a Karma Yogi. So, dear friends, it's been honor, pleasure, and privilege talking with all the esteemed colleagues. I hope you liked this workshop. If you implement this principle, it will increase your lifespan as well as health span. Okay, you would be able to be active in your 70s and 80s. So try to follow these things within one or two decades. There may be certain drugs and gene therapy which will reverse your age or prolong your age. Till that time, follow the principle which I, I have discussed. And this session is open for question and answer and comments. Okay, so till that time, I'm going to share my community. I'm a founder of health and happiness community. The code of honor of this community is holistic health. The member in this community try to achieve holistic health in every sphere of life, maybe personal, social, professional, and spiritual. And not only they achieve the, uh, the health for themselves, they guide their family members and friends to attend the same. They live life mindfully with awareness. They live in a present moment, accepting life in a non-judgmental way. They have courage to change the thing they can change and they accept the things they cannot change. Third is environmental protection. Member place to protect the environment by saving water, maintaining cleanliness and avoiding pollution of environment in whatever way possible. Leadership. Change start with me. The member do not try to change other people, but they change themselves and they set example in front of other people. They are torch bear to the society. The next principle is Kaizen. That is continuous daily improvement. 
The members strive for continuous daily improvement. They learn new things, they implement it, and they teach. They are in competition with themselves, not with other people. Okay. And they want to become a better person today as compared to yesterday. They believe in taking action. The last principle is contribution to society. The members strive to contribute in whatever possible way to the society. It may be monitoring, knowledge, time, and skill. So why I started this community? I'd like to share my story with you. Five years back, my health was in a bad shape. I was stressed out, burnt out. I had put on 10 kg of weight. I was looking much older than my chronological age. Then I stopped, I introspected. I was in a rat race. I was living life mechanically. Then I started reading a lot of books on health, spirituality, self-help book. I formulated certain principles. I implemented them and I transformed my life. I lost 10 kg of weight. My work efficiency in increased, my energy level increased. And I started looking much younger than my chronological age. So I set a mission in front of me that I'm going to share this knowledge which I have acquired to the people because there are so many chronic disorder across the globe and there's so much of suffering. So I want to share this knowledge with other people. So I started conducting seminar, webinar, workshop for various organizations, various colleges to spread awareness about health and happiness. So you can see the seminar which has been conducted on various colleges, various organizations. This is at the National College, Bandra. This is at Indian Academy of Pediatrics. This is also Indian Medical Association. This is Indian, Academy, uh, Indian Medical Association. This is for CRPF person. This is on radio. This is for thalassemic people. By conducting seminars and webinars, it may affect and it may influence a few hundred people. But I want to inspire two million people about chronic disorder, stress, and how to manage it effectively so as to lead healthy, happy, and more fulfilling life. So that's why I have published a book, Oh Stress, Give Me a Break, which is an ultimate stress management guide to lead healthy, happy, and more fulfilling life. And it has become Amazon number one bestseller. Recently, I've published a book, 17 Powerful Secrets to Manage Stress During Corona Pandemic. We all know that Corona has just affected each and every person. And there's an atmosphere of stress, anxiety, hopelessness. How to deal with this? So I have discussed this principle in this book. So my... So my journey was like this and I fall in this valley then I introspected after reading so many book I got wisdom and I came out of this valley so my dear friend you might be on this journey you might be in this valley with the help of my experience I want to form this bridge so that you don't have to fall this valley or if you are in this valley, you want to get it out as early as possible. And this is the purpose of my life, having a bridge to so many people through my wisdom. So if you are stressed out, if you have a chronic disorder like obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer, mental disorder, and want to reverse this disease, if you don't have this disorder and want to keep yourself away from these disorders, want to lose weight and reverse diabetes. If anybody in your family has this disorder, do you want to age healthy without disease and spend, and don't want to spend lack of money popping pills. If you want to lead a life which is contented, which is meaningful, purposeful, if you want to succeed in your professional life, if you want to have an awesome relationship with your spouse, children's colleagues and parents, in short, if you want to lead 
healthy, happy, and more fulfilling life, then I would recommend to join my community. Okay, and so many people has help got help and transform their life being in my community. Okay, so dear friend, today's session was about how to lead healthy, happy life, increase your lifespan as well as health span, and contribute positively to your society. I hope. you have got golden nuggets you will implement the principle which i have discussed today and increase your life span as well as health span and you will add years to your life and life to your years okay and remain youthful in your 70s and 80s so thank you so much for being here and i'd like to take some question and answer uh So thank you so much, Dr. Samir, for this comment. Thank you so much, Dr. Vora, for the comment. Thank you so much, Ram Krishna, for the excellent comment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been honor, privilege, and pleasure communicating with this kind of esteemed audience. You have been a great audience. Thank you so much, all of you, for giving commenting. thank you batul ji for giving excellent comment for the session so dear friend if you have any questions your suggestion if you want to join my community then contact me my email is drsbsabl79 at the rate gmail.com or you can visit my website www. dr sunil sable.com okay so and if you want to continue in this global health initiative then keep on joining my live workshop which i'll be conducting every week so have a wonderful day wonderful life healthy life ahead thank you so much and i'll be ending this meeting thank you so much